Welcome to the sheep brain dissection. So depending on where you purchased your sheep brain, you may have a white layer on top of the brain and that is the dura mater, one of the layers of the meninges that are covering the brain itself and protecting it. So the first thing that you'll wanna do is to remove that dura mater layer using your probe and scissors. Okay, now that you've removed the dura mater, let's take a look at some of the external features. Starting with the cerebrum, which is the largest portion of the brain, and then the cerebellum is found behind that, and the spinal cord sticking out of the cerebellum. Okay, next you'll notice the long ridge down the middle of the cerebrum, and that is called the longitudinal fissure. Although it's the longest ridge that you can see, there are lots of little hills and valleys on the cerebrum. Each little hill or bump is called a gyrus, or gyri for plural, and then the tiny little valleys in between are called sulci or sulcus for singular. So gyri and sulci. And the cerebrum is divided into the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And again, the division is made by that longitudinal fissure down the middle. Now if you flip your brain over, you'll see some features on the underside here. We have the optic nerves, which bring in impulses from the eyes of the sheep, and they cross over there as they reach the brain in the optic chiasma. And then if you flip the brain back over, you can see the other major fissure across the brain, and that is the transverse fissure, and that divides the cerebrum and the cerebellum. And then looking at the lobes of the cerebrum, in the front, you have the frontal lobe, and that's smaller in sheep than it is in humans. It's much bigger in humans, but that frontal lobe is responsible for reasoning and decision making. Behind that are the parietal lobes, and that is responsible for sensations and visual spatial processing. Then the occipital lobe is responsible for memory of objects and visual processing, and then the temporal lobes are on the sides and those aid in memory and comprehension and sensation of smells and sounds. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is divide the brain in half down the longitudinal fissure so that we can look at some of the internal features of the brain. And I'm using a plastic knife just because the brain is very soft but if you'd rather use your scalpel or scissors, that's fine too. Okay, so just let's take a look at one half or one hemisphere of the brain. You can move the other one out of the way for now. And we'll look at some of the internal features. Starting with the ventricles, which are the spaces found inside the brain. And those ventricles, as you remember, are filled with cerebrospinal fluid, which bathes the brain and protects it.
And you should also easily be able to see the corpus callosum, which is the whiter band, lighter band, that's found there near the ventricles. And that's responsible for helping signals be passed back and forth through the right and left hemispheres. Below the corpus callosum, you'll find the thalamus, which relays impulses from your senses to the cerebral cortex or outer layer of the cerebrum. And below the thalamus is the hypothalamus, the space there, it's sort of a vague space, but that hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, which is found below it, are both responsible for secreting hormones throughout your body. And we'll talk more about those as we get into the endocrine system. And as we get into portions of the brain stem here, the first section is the midbrain, just beyond the thalamus. Midbrain. And that relays information to your cerebrum about your body movement and your posture. You'll see a little bulge on the brain stem. That is the pons, which is the bridge linking the cerebrum and cerebellum, followed by the medulla oblongata which transmits information between the brain and the spinal cord, which is that last section there. And then the final structure to look at here is the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is responsible for coordinating movements so that they're graceful and efficient. It's also involved in involuntary muscle movements. And that's where we will wrap up our brain dissection for today so you can clean up.